Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you every single step it takes to make a box just like this. This is a little 5 inch by 5 inch box that I made uh, that I can keep all the things from my pockets at the end of the day, including my keys or some coins that I'm carrying, business cards, whatever. You can make these any size you want. They're very, very easy. And I'm going to walk you through every step from the website that I used to start making this. Then we'll jump over to Illustrator and make some additional edits, including putting this curve in there and these little uh, handles. And then I'll show you after I cut it how I assemble it. So let's jump right in and make these fun little trays. Here we are at MakerCase.com, or more specifically, old.MakerCase.com. They updated their website a while ago, and I prefer the old version. It's purely a UI thing, uh, so that's what I use. Someday when it disappears, I'll have to use the new one, but this is what I'm using. You can use whatever you like. But again, I'm at old.MakerCase.com. So this is really simple. All you do is start at the top with uh, your units that you want to use. I use inches. In this case, I'm going to make a 5x5 five five box. So it's going to be 5x5x1.5. Five by five by so there's my 5x5, five five, if I can type, by 1.5. I want those to be the inside dimensions, so I'm going to click that. And then on material, you either choose the material thickness that you have if it's already listed, or you can type in your own. In my case, I'm going to use 1345 uh, .1345 is the thickness of the material that I have. And then all you do uh, for the last couple steps is choose the type of joints you want, whether you want finger joints like this, or T-slots, which I've never actually used myself. I want it as simple looking as I can, so I go with the finger. And then you can change the width of the tabs a little bit here, uh, but I want them as wide as I can so that I have as few as possible. Now, side note, a lot of times after I produce the file here. I will sometimes get rid of all the tabs, just make it one long tab so it's a little cleaner looking. But again, we'll just finish it this way. So then all you do now is go down here and you click Generate Laser Cutter Case Plans. Click that. Gives you a couple options here. I just skip through all of this because I'm not going to do any text engraving or anything like that. Uh, and here is where you would enter your kerf if you're going to. But in this case, I'm totally fine with not entering any kerf and letting it be a little bit loose and then I can just glue it together. That also allows for any uh, small variations in the width or the, I'm sorry, the thickness of the material because that does happen. So I'm just going to leave everything the way it is there and I'm going to click download plans. And then that's going to then uh, allow me to save it, which I will do that right here. And then I'm ready to open this in my vector software. All right, so here we are in Illustrator, and I'm just going to show you what I do, or what I did in this case, to create the little uh, trays that I made. So first of all, here's a top piece and a bottom piece. We're not going to need both of those because it's an open box or an open tray. So I'm going to select this one and just delete it. And then these two are identical, and these two are identical. So for the moment, I'm going to delete one of them on each of those pairs. And then when I get done editing uh, the other, I'm going to just duplicate it. So let me move it just a little bit away from uh, the one below it just so it's not touching. So here's the first thing I do. I'll zoom in so I can see a little better. I'll take the direct selection tool and I want to flatten out the top edges of these side pieces so, uh, so the top is flat. So what I'm going to do is take the direct selection tool and I'm just going to select all of the nodes that are along this bottom row of each one of the tabs and then go up here to the anchors and click this remove selected anchor points and now they're all gone but I want to get rid of these extra ones just to keep the file neat so I'll select this one on the far left and I'll click minus and I'll just keep clicking minus and you'll see that it just selects the next one to the right and I want to delete all those so now I've got my top all nice and clean there I'm gonna zoom back out for a minute go over to this one do the same thing the direct selection tool. I'm going to select the ones on the bottom part of the tabs. Uh, delete. Oops. And then select, well, <laughs> select there and again delete all these anchors all the way across. Just like that. So now I've got it nice and neat. And I could just use it just like it is, but I want to add a little simulated um, 
slot for uh, handholds on this on one of these. I'm gonna then just do a little curve in the top of the other one, like a lot of times you would see in a paper tray or something like that. So then I'm gonna go over to the rectangle tool and hold it down for a moment, and I'm gonna go down to, well, actually I could do the rounded rectangle or the rectangle. I'm gonna do the rectangle, and then I'm gonna round the end ends. So that's probably a goofy way to do it, but that's just something I like. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a rectangle like this. I'm gonna select both the rectangle and the side slot and go up here to align so that I make sure that, the, that it's center aligned right here with each other. And then now, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit further. I'm gonna to go to the direct selection tool again, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna to go to the selection tool and then just round these out to make it rounded like that. I definitely could have done the rounded rectangle as well. So either way works. And then if you want to, you can go ahead and select both of these and go to Pathfinder right here and minus uh, minus back or minus front, sorry. And then it cuts it out of that. So they're not two separate pieces anymore. It's actually one piece cut out of the other. And then we're gonna go over to this one since that one's all done. And we're gonna go and get the ellipse tool. And I'm just gonna do something about like this. And it's just, it's not magic, just kind of whatever kind of cut I wanna do in the side of it. I will then select both of these again, go up to align, make sure they're aligned properly, select them again, and go to Pathfinder minus front. And there you go, it's cut that just a little bit out of the side. Now, I could undo a little bit and go, have it go a little deeper if, if you want a different look. Again, just for OCD purposes, align it again, make sure I got it right, and minus front. And you got a nice curved side like that. Just depends on the look you're going for. Now that I have those, I can just select and copy and paste so that I have uh, two of that and then I need two of this one. And I am ready to cut and assemble. All right, now that we've cut them, all we gotta do is put them together and it's really, really simple, just like it appears. So you'll take your two sides, put them just like this. In fact, since I gotta hold this, I'm gonna do like this. What I do is I just take my glue and I put little small dots in every one of these uh, crevices here, every one of these slots. Just put a little dot of glue, dot, 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 dot. Don't use a lot of it at all. If I get any accidentally on the wood, I'll wipe it off. And I typically will use a clear sealant spray on this afterwards. So if there's a tiny bit of glue that shows there, it just won't show up at all because it gets a little darker with the, with the sealant. In fact, let me show you this. This has the, the spray sealant on it, and you see a little bit of the uh, color change there and it helps hide any um, glue that might show up if I happen to get a little sloppy with the glue. Put my dots of glue on all that, and of course, obviously, I'm not gonna do it for this video, and then you can just put it together just like this. And then what I do to help keep this together while the glue is drying, I will take some rubber bands, and let me see if I can do this, or I can break a rubber band just like that. And uh, I'll just take the rubber band and put it right around it just like this to hold it together while it's drying. And then that's all it takes. And once you're done, you've got a great little box. Now, one last little thing you probably noticed on this one. I have a piece of felt in there. And all I did was that I took a square when I was an illustrator and I uh, made a square that's the exact size of the inside of this and I cut the felt with um, the Glowforge and it works great and I just glued it right in there and I love that it has just a little soft uh, piece of felt there at the bottom. Have fun making these. I think you'll really enjoy them. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me see what you guys make because I'd love to see them. They look great with different materials, different colors. You could even engrave a message down here for somebody or a logo. There's all kinds of ways to make these really great and customized. So let me see what you guys make. And let me help you if you have any questions. Until then, as always, I'll see you in the next one.